One of the best characteristics I think Peter possesses and which makes him my guru is that he tells it like it is. Please let me introduce you to Peter. What's happening is with all the foreclosures that are occurring, and there's roughly been about 250,000 foreclosure filings in South Florida. This is since 2007. This is Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Broward, Dade County, which is, which is West Palm, Boca, Fort Lauderdale, uh, uh, Pompano, Hollywood, Sunny Isle, South Beach, and in, in, in downtown Miami. There's been 250,000 foreclosure filings. What's a foreclosure filing? Foreclosure filing is somebody doesn't pay their mortgage for 90 days. They don't pay for 90 days, the bank goes on the record and tells the court, we intend to repossess that property after the process. There's been 250,000 of those. How many have actually been repossessed by the bank? 100,000 to date. Now one of the issues everybody's hearing about and one of the issues that the media is jumping on is this something called foreclosure freeze. What's this foreclosure freeze? What's the robo signer uh, uh, process? What that is is it's primarily, my understanding of it, and an attorney can probably tell us better, my understanding of it is there's a certain judicial process that has to be adhered to in order to foreclose a property, and that judicial process requires certain steps. Some of the steps were not adhered to properly. It doesn't mean the people who stop paying their mortgages are likely to end up uh, living in their home for free. What it does mean is that they're going to probably get an extension until the banks can go through. They can ensure that they've done everything properly and ask for the requirement. And then lo and behold, you'll probably start to see that product brought back out to market uh, after it is formally uh, foreclosed. Again, 250,000 foreclosure filings in South Florida, 100,000 properties have come back thus far. The people who have lost their homes, they're moving into rentals. And ideally, and more likely than not, they're moving in some of the newer product that's out there. What are they paying for this newer product? Downtown Miami right now, the median is 167 a square foot per month. Um, what's the cost? Roughly about 50 cents a square foot per month. What are the taxes? Roughly about 30 cents a square foot per month. So what you're seeing is normally your expense, not including reserves, not including any kind of build out, not including um, any kind of vacancy, is probably gonna come in at about 80 to 85 cents, maybe as much as 90 cents. How much are you generating on the rent? Median of 167. You get into certain rock star buildings, whether it be Marquee or it be Icon or it be some of these others, you're looking at north of $2 a foot. You're looking in some cases as much as 250 a foot. Jump over to the barrier island on the beach on the sand, you probably can achieve somewhere close to $3 a foot, especially if you are renting on a seasonal basis, which is primarily gonna be Thanksgiving, our Thanksgiving, US Thanksgiving, November, up until about April or May, roughly, or so. Now, the expense on the beach, you should keep in mind, is gonna be a little bit higher because of insurance related to hurricanes. Typically on the beach, you're looking at a minimum of about 70 cents a foot per month in maintenance fee. It could be higher if the building you go into has any kind of towel service, if they offer a special valet, if there's any kind of perks or, or sweet things. We've seen some buildings where the maintenance is as high as 175 a square foot per month, but that building is probably gonna generate north of three to four dollars a square foot in rent. So, as you can see, if you're going in on cash, you're probably gonna have a little bit of a return. Uh, generally speaking, the foreign investor who's coming in, who's going after wealth preservation, i.e. Latin America, they're concerned that Hugo Chavez is gonna see some property, they're gonna see some company, they're afraid that their, their funds are gonna be locked down. These people are, are parking their money over into Miami because it's a quick jaunt, it's a two hour flight, it's a three hour flight, they can come over, they can do what they do, they can, they can operate in whatever language they need to operate in. I don't know if people know this, but Miami-Dade County, where the city of Miami and city of Miami Beach are, about 2.5 million people, 55% foreign born based on US Census Bureau data. This is a, a melting pot for primarily the world. We have Italian investors coming over here. We have investors from Monaco, we have investors from Singapore, we have investors from all over Canada. They're coming up from Argentina, they're coming up from Brazil. In fact, the Realtor Association of, uh, the National Realtor Association, they just came out with a report in, in, the, in the Miami Association of Realtors was also involved with that. And what they found is of the foreign buyers today, 28% is gonna be Venezuelan because of Chavez, because of the issues there. Who's the second high, highest concentration of investors? Canadians. Canadians represent 10%. Who's number three? Brazil. Who's number four? Argentina. Who's number five? Colombia. The, the largest European investor in South Florida right now today, the French. They're over there because of some efforts that the Miami Association of Real, uh, Realtors has uh, implemented in order to go over there and try to bring in the Europeans. We find that things are very seasonal. So really right now, foreign buyers are basically descending upon South Florida and they're taking it, and they're stealing, and they're buying at prices. I would tell you today, based on these numbers you've heard, the condos in Miami, the marquee stuff, not the marquee only, but the marquee product, it's cheaper than what you're gonna find here in Toronto. We were looking around at some of the product, we were talking 300, 400, 500 dollars a square foot, depending on what the product is. 
difference here is it'll be built out, it'll be turnkey ready. The difference there is you'll have to pump some money into putting in a floor maybe or doing some sort of build out or doing some sort of improvements. But you can see the cost is virtually the same. So then the question becomes, you know, why would I invest in Florida? Well, the reason people invest in Florida and the reason people like Florida, ultimately, A, it's going to be the weather, B, it's going to be the U.S. infrastructure, C, it's going to have that ability to retrade the product. Um, our unemployment rate down there right now, 13.5%. How many deals are trading? Downtown Miami, 715 a quarter. All cash buyers, 83% are cash, uh, only about 17% are, are, are going to be financed right now today.